Now, you might notice that there are some x-intercepts looking you at in the face, right? Does everybody realize there's some x-intercepts up there just from just general knowledge? I usually don't worry about telling students that, but it might not hurt for you to realize there's some x-intercepts. We'll put them up there later. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There's one at negative one right here. And there's one out here positive two. Please do not let those get in the way of your critical numbers and all the other information. But there definitely are some intercepts there. Take the derivative. Now. If you were taking the derivative, you realize there is what kind of rule right here? Product rule. You don't use the product rule, you don't get it right. Two thirds x plus one to the one negative one third times one times x minus two to the one third. I'm going to go ahead and put the 1 there so you know I did it. Plus x plus 1 to the 2 thirds, 1 third x minus 2 to the negative 2 thirds times 1. Line up your plus signs and factor. I'll help you out. I'm going to factor out a 1 third. Now I'll leave it two. I'm going to let you factor out everything else. See if you get it right. See what you do with your factoring. Everybody realize you factor three out of that? Yeah, and what happens to that one third? Yeah, see, so yeah, that's nice. So you get x plus one to the negative one third. Let me answer this just in case it's. I uh, know about spam risk. Don't have to answer that. I'm waiting for somebody to call me to see if I'm going to make any money. Yeah, a school teacher. Important for somebody to call me and tell me if I'm going to make a little extra money. All right, I set that equal to zero. Or, also, I realize that negative one does not make it equal zero, but it is a critical number. But negative one really makes it what? Undefined. Because if I put a negative one in there, I don't get zero in the numerator, I get zero in the what? Denominator. Is everyone okay with that? So, zero is a critical number. The zero is a number that makes it undefined. Vertical tangent. 
2 is also a critical number, but it will be going either straight up or straight down at 2 because 2 makes the derivative 1 undefined. 1 makes the derivative equal to 0. So you have a horizontal tangent there. Okay, well, I'm not real excited about this, but I got to pick a number smaller than zero and plug in here and see what happens. What number do you want? To, do y'all want me to change this to fractions before we test it? Does that make it easier to test? We write that in fractional form. It does. Maybe I don't know. Oh, it does. Okay, pick negative one. If you put negative 1 in here, oh, I, I put a positive 1. I didn't put my negative 1. Why did I not put a negative 1? I put 0 in there. 0 doesn't work. Somebody's supposed to help me out here. Negative 1. Negative 1. Gives me a vertical. Yeah, negative 1. Oh, please, on the camera there, folks. Yeah, Mr. Evans saw that negative 1 makes that equal 0, right? Positive 2 makes that equal 0, and 1 makes that equal 0. Help me out. Okay, pick a number smaller than negative 1. Negative 2. Negative 2. That's going to be a negative. We're going to test negative 2. That's going to make a negative, and the cube root of a negative is still negative, right? Then we're going to put a negative 2 here. That's going to be a negative, but what are we going to do to it? We're going to square it, right? After we take the cube root, it's negative, but then we're going to square it, so that will become a what? Positive. This is always going to be positive because it's got the what right there? Square. Then we put negative 2 in there, we get a negative. Negative times positive times negatives are positive. We find out all the way for eternity up to negative 1, our graph is increasing. Y is increasing. Now, what magical number am I going to pick between negative 1 and 1? Zero. 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 Notice if you get your critical numbers wrong, bad things happen, like I almost did. I was just doing that to show you what could happen. All right, we'll test zero. So we're going to get a positive, positive, Put zero in there, you're going to get a negative. You're going to get a negative. So between negative one and one, this thing is always going to go down. I bet between one and two, it probably keeps going down. Who knows? What number are you going to pick between one and two to test? Test what? Three over two. Test three halves. Please don't test 1.5. Three halves. Positive, positive, positive. Three halves. And I know that's positive because I got a square right there. That's going to be a positive and a positive. Between one and two, this thing always goes up. Now, for numbers larger than two, it's either going to keep going up or it's going to start going down. Test four, test five, test six. Positive, positive, positive. So it keeps going up. Okay. Pretty cool. Now, we already know that negative 1, 0 is on the graph. Negative 1, 0. We already know that 2, 0 is on the graph, right? And then we need to know what 1 would give us. 1 is going to give us some nasty number that we don't even want to know about. Put a 1 here, you get 2 to the 2 thirds times negative 1 to the 1 thirds. So you get negative 1. So you get negative, negative 4 to the 1 third or negative 2 to the 2 thirds. That's your y value, which the only thing I care about is that it's down here, okay? 
Now, if you think about this, and you're trying to uh, realize that between negative 1 and 1, it's got to be going down, right? And at, from 1 to 2, it's got to be going up. Well, if you know 2, 0 is there, then you know 1 better be what? Below it. Is that okay? Now, if you put 0 in the original, you get negative 2 to the 1 third, which is somewhere like right in here, okay? Which you don't have to know, but you know, just if you wanted to know it was there. All right. Rough sketch. It's going to go up to here, and it's going to make a point. Because see how it's going to have to go up and then come back down, so it's going to come up. Go straight up and then come watch straight down for a second. Is that okay? Then it's going to come over here and it's going to touch that going nice and straight across. Then it's going to hit two going straight up. And then after it goes straight up, when it hit two, it's going to keep going what? Straight. It's going to keep going up, right? So if you wanted to, you could do a light little rough estimate of what it looks like. And the only problem with doing this little rough estimate of what it looks like is that it might have a change in concavity somewhere that you don't know about. But I'm pretty certain if it's going to go straight up there, it's going to have a concavity change. But in order to test what I just sketched, I have to do what? I have to take a what? Second derivative. When I take the second derivative, the good news is I could probably take the second derivative of that right there pretty easy, couldn't I? Yeah, take the second derivative of that pretty easy. Any questions about what we've done with the first derivative? Are we good with the first derivative? Okay, and see, I, I'm just guessing about the concavity here, but come on, there's no other way to make it go straight up without doing that. You'll learn that. All right, second derivative. I'm fading fast. I have been teaching a long time. Okay. All right. Y prime equals. Y double prime. Negative one third x plus one to the negative four thirds times x minus 2 the negative 2 thirds times x minus 1 plus x plus 1 to the negative 1 third times negative 2 thirds x minus 2 to the negative 5 thirds times x minus 1 plus x plus 1 to the 1 third, negative 1 third, times x minus 2 to the negative 2 thirds, times just good old 1. Because you're going to have 1, right? Bring it to, well, you don't even have to do a product rule. Really. You just take the derivative of that. What's the derivative of that? 1. Is everybody okay with that? And if you want to, you can do the chain rule, but you don't need to. So you're going to get negative 2 thirds times 1. Because the derivative of x minus 1 without a power is just 1. Then what do you have to do to that? You have to be able to what it? You have to factor it. And of course, the man on the back row wants to complain. And that's okay that he wants to complain because he, 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 he's, he's already heard Mr. Evans' story. Do you complain when you're rehearsing music? You're not the first person to leave rehearsal, are you? No. Check it. All right. Good. I've got to have some room to simplify it, so I'm just going to simplify it right here because there's no way I can. Right, you all bored, get too old. Line up your plus signs. Okay, I'm not really going to line them up. 
Okay, you're going to factor out a negative one third. That takes care of that. That's going to leave a positive two in this one. And it's going to leave a negative in that one. So put a negative. Is that right? Oh, you don't want to factor that out because then you have to leave a negative three. Yeah, let's we'll do that. Leave a negative three. They'll figure it out. Because what's negative one third times negative three? It's a positive one. One. So, and that way we can just not have any fractions in there. Okay, go factor out x plus one to what power? Negative one thirds. And we do that, that's good. This one's going to just become x plus one right here. And the one after the negative three is just going to become what? X plus one. That makes me feel pretty good. Then we'll factor out x minus two to what power? Negative five over three. This one's just going to become x minus two. This one's going to become one. And this one's going to become x minus two. Now, there is a problem. This x minus one right here is not going to factor out because you don't have an x minus one down there at the end, do you? So you're going to get an x minus one in this one. And you're going to get an x minus one in this one. Then what you're supposed to do is multiply all that out and factor it, and you'll find two key points right there. When you multiply all that out and factor it, you're going to find two key points. Because look, it's going to be an x squared. Does everybody see how it's going to be some kind of x squared value? All right. Do you realize you're doing some algebra now? Doing some math. But Mr. Evans, I thought I was taking calculus. You are. All right. So, just because I enjoy watching y'all sit out there and write, and I feel like I'm actually doing some teaching for a change. Somebody just watching this video goes, well, he should have just taught them the concept, and they've never had to do all the algebra. Yeah, try to pass doing that. Okay. Negative one-third x plus one to the negative four-thirds x minus two to the negative five-thirds bracket parentheses. Okay. That's going to be x squared minus three x plus two. That's going to be 2 times x squared minus 1, minus 3 times x squared minus x minus 2. And that way we can simplify it. Okay, put a plus sign there. x squared, that's 3x squared minus 3x squared. Ooh, the x squared went away. Now, let's see about the minus 3x. I got a minus 3x. And a plus 3x. Guess what? The x's all went away. I don't even care about the whole number because that's not going to affect my critical numbers, really. But let's see, I got 2. Minus 2 is 0. Plus 6. So I get a 6. All that works out to just be a 6. So there's y. Double prime equals. Oh, and what's negative 1 third times 6? Negative 2. So y double prime, y double prime, y second derivative equals negative 2 parentheses x plus 1 to the negative 4 thirds x minus 2 to the negative 5 thirds. So I find out negative 1 and 2 are the only places I'm going to have any inflection change. 
I pick a number smaller than negative 1. What number are you going to pick that's smaller than negative 1? Negative 10. Does everybody agree that's going to be a negative raised to an even power? So that's going to become positive, right? Negative here raised to an odd power is going to be negative. So negative times positive times negative. It has to be smiling. So it's smile going up. Then it leaves going up smiling and it smiles. Just like I imagined. All the way to negative. All the way to two. It smiles. Then it's going straight up as it smiles. Okay, yeah, I'll pick zero. I, I, I'm taking a guess. What are you going to test next? You're going to test zero, right? Test zero. Negative, positive, negative. So it is going to smile. You test zero, you find out it smiles. Test number bigger than two. Ten. Test ten. That's going to be positive. That's going to be positive. Negative. It's going to start frowning. So that's where it's around. Now, sometimes you'll find out there's another inflection point somewhere back there or somewhere up here, but this one didn't do that. It smiles, went straight up, has to keep smiling, and frowns. And that, my friends, is how you do real graphing. If you can do these,